another episode of the Stephanie Gately Show. Raphael will be alongside, of course, head coach Stephanie Gately. The Fort Randall coming off a split week. They were one and one. But first, let's address the other win that Coach Gately got this week. Her Philadelphia Eagles beating Eagles. the Patriots. E A G L E S Eagles. She came into the uh, she came into the office with mm -hmm. the Eagles shirt. I don't think you walked into the whole office with it. Mm -hmm. You just came out of your office with it right before the show. So I said, let me revise the rundown here, and we'll go straight into the Eagles winning Super Bowl Fifty Two. So, Coach, what what does that mean for you? Well, you know, my kids have always been diehard Eagles fans. I've always been Eagles fan. That's always been my football team. But you know, they go to the games. You know, DC and his girlfriend Claire have season tickets. Dutch comes in with because my sister Tyra gets him tickets. My brother H is at all the games, so and his family. So it's been a traditional thing that they have done. Uh, the kids had said, "If we get to the if we get to the uh, Super Bowl, mom, we're going." Unfortunately, Coop couldn't go because they had practice the next day. But my brother-in-law Bruce came up big with some tickets and uh, took care of the kids, and they said it was just a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Now, you won against Rhode Island the same day, and I know you celebrate till midnight for the win. So do you prolong that a little bit because of the Super Bowl? Do you, do you delay it? Is there a double celebration? Did you celebrate till midnight the night after? <laughs> what's, the, what's the deal? No, I celebrated during that game. I'm like, okay, we won. <laughs> Go Eagles. And uh, no, I mean, that. my husband and I watched it, and, and Val was watching some of it with us, and, and it just was like, it was one of those games, I mean, that you just, you know, you're on the edge of your seat because, uh, I mean, the, the amount of yards, the offensive yards was amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't expect it to be a low scoring, but I certainly didn't expect it to be that high of a scoring. And I was concerned when the Patriots took the lead. But the biggest play, in my opinion, obviously there were some huge touchdowns mm -hmm. by Ertz, you know, the one in, in the end zone, obviously, but um, was the fumble. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one thing I thought that really jumped at me was how – astute Tom Brady was to look like it was a forward pass like it just the fact that he knew that he was fumbling it but tried to sell that it was a forward pass mm -hmm. obviously you know you go to the tape and it's not but but afterwards just you know hearing Peter you know Doug Peterson talk about the team and how in individuals you know make a difference but teams create miracles and that really resonated with me and and you know we actually just showed it to our team today and it just said the importance of, of being a team and and that they totally typified the blue collar team mm -hmm. And now let's get into this week for, for your team. Uh, it was a loss against St. Louis in St. Louis, a double overtime loss. That game without Jamaris Davis, you said afterwards, and you're not a moral victory mm -hmm. type of coach, but it w you said it was as close to a win you could get for that kind of result. I really wasn't sure how we were going to respond, you know, because we had won here in a really tightly contested game with, with G playing probably one of our best games of the year. So she had scored half our points in that game, and then you go on the road and and you're losing that. You're leading, you're leading score, and you're leading rebounder, and you have an extremely young team on the road against a senior laden, you know, St. Louis team who has five seniors and two juniors in the rotation, and plus five thousand screaming kids, you know. And uh, it was their field trip day, so I really wasn't sure how we would respond. So the fact that we responded with such resiliency, you know, we built an early lead in, in the first half, but. Um, had a major let up defensively, gave up 28 points in the third quarter, which is really uncharacteristic of us. So um, it was, you know, that was a learning experience because we had also given up a lead against George Mason. So, you know, we talked about that against Rhode Island about learning to put people away. And then that game was only the second time Jamaris Davis wasn't in the lineup. The previous game was against Pittsburgh, where the team did come out with the victory. So, how did those two games? compare is one bigger than the other even though one was a win <laughs> one was a loss uh, well conference is obviously going to trump anything mm -hmm. but uh, I think just our kids realizing that nobody's bigger than the program but you know that we that we are a total team and that different kids are going to step up at different times and and respond to adversity and I think our kids responded very very well and I think with G back that just makes us stronger Bree Cavanaugh 37 points a career high Obviously was helped by the double overtime, but she was going to have an insane day regardless whether you went to overtime or not. Is that is this become a growth pattern where she'll have now the 20-point game kind of consistently and it's a matter of can she spike past that? Or is this just now a point in the season where, okay, this is where she's going to be. This is She could be more consistent with it, but I've kind of just let her on her own. I mean, I've learned to trust Brie. I, I think where I'd like to see her grow, and a lot of it is obviously youth. You know, she's young, is that um, just understanding good shot, bad shot. You know, I pretty much give her a, a lot of a lot of free reign to do what she wants. But I thought in the Rhode Island game, you know, she came down on the break and, and didn't work the clock at all and, and took some defended shots. And 
Um, that's something that you do if you're down 10 to 15 and you need to create something. But when you're up and you have a lead, there's no reason to try to create something. Just make them play some defense. And just her learning the difference of those things. I mean, she had to pl obviously play a ton of minutes against St. Louis. And so I think fatigue did set in at the end. And, you know, we need different people to step up. I thought Lauren had a solid game and Mary had another double-double. So I think different kids learn to step up. And then, you know, hopefully that, that'll be the case once we get to the stretch run. And that was a question I was going to ask. Was fatigue, when did that become an issue in that St. Louis game? Because obviously without Jamaris Davis, it just brings another person that has to play more minutes. And the team as a whole is just going to gather more minutes. So when did you see that becoming an issue? I mean, I think the the biggest Achilles heel in that game was our post defense. I mean, she's our best defender. And I think, you know, their, their kid gets, you know, really took us to task. I mean, she had a career high against us. And then that same thing happened in Rhode Island. And that's something that we've been trying to focus on the last – couple days was really to improve our interior defense just because it just uh, we need to work. I mean, we can't play defense once they catch the ball. we got to work before they catch the ball. That That's also on the post player, but it's also on the pressure defense. So, I mean, there were some things that obviously have jumped out at me in the last week or so that we need to improve, and, and you know, these games will help us figure that out. And you emphasized before that St. Louis game that you were if they were going to beat you, they were going to have to do it at the post. You weren't going to allow those threes. And then in the third quarter, that kind of – it didn't go out the window, but that's where they started to chip back and come back at you. And so was that a was that an issue of just were, were you getting frustrated with the team that that was how they were coming back? Or is that just a matter of, OK, now they're hurting us in the post. Let them try to make the long three. There, there was a couple things. I mean, one, and I saw it also kind of rear its ugly head in the in the Rhode Island game is. We had had a lead, you know, and I think when you get a lead, I, I've seen with our team, maybe it's youth, maybe it's inexperience, but w we just get comfortable and complacent, and all of a sudden that, that fire to, 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 to shut people down dissipates a little bit. And I think our kids, I, I think we had some mental breakdowns defensively. Part of it was we put too much attention, you know, towards Jackie Kemp, which forced us to help, and they mm -hmm. do a great job of exposing that, and that's what they did. And part of this was going for, going for steals and, and making decisions we didn't do in the first half. So they really exposed us in the third quarter. And last week we were talking about the URI game as what could only be called a trap game coming after St. Louis right before bye week on Super Bowl Sunday as much as that might come into play. So how proud are you that your team just came out, played like they were the favorites? They, they gave away a lead at some point in the game, but they still ended up coming out with a double-digit more lead. Yeah, I mean, I was proud. I mean, because we had had emotional and physically long stretch. You know, we hadn't had a day off for over a week. And um, I think the kids were mentally and physically challenged at that point. And so I think the fact that we came in and, and said, listen, and I said to them, you know, our big emphasis that day, there's no name on that jersey that we're playing. That team stands between us and our position in the conference. So we got to go out. And regardless of what the record is, I told them that, that Rhode Island is a talented team. I said, if we're patient, we'll get great shots. You know, but offensively, they can expose us, which I think they did in the post. And last thing here, Brie Kavanaugh with 20 points in that game and then obviously 37 the game before, ends up with another Rookie of the Week title for the Atlantic 10. That's her fourth. She's one away from tying Sam Clark for most Rookie of the Week awards. Is At this point of the season, do you look at that as – is it growing more of importance, and do you look for her to be the Atlantic 10 Rookie of the Year, or do you just not even, not oh, even that, look at it? We don't even it? talk about that. that. That's not even in our discussion. That, that takes care of itself. Mm -hmm. I think how we do it will determine those awards. I'm a big believer of, like, even when I'm voting, you know, if, if I'm close, I'm giving it to the team that, that, that finished stronger. Mm -hmm. So those – I don't even worry about the individual awards right now. I'm just worried about – I you know, Bree had no fouls the other day, and I need Bree to understand that – she could be as much as a factor on the defensive end as she is on the offensive end. And I think sometimes she takes her breaks on the defensive end. And I think that's where I'd like her to clean it up a little bit because – and she did. I mean, she had seven steals against Rhode Island. I mean, and, and I think she got in the passing lanes much better. Uh, and that's what she's capable of doing. So that's the challenge I've been putting on her. You know, I think you, you're capable of getting five rebounds a game. I think you're capable of getting three steals a game. So, you know, I think she responded well to that challenge. So I like her to be the, as big a factor as she is on the defensive end and all the other accolades and the stuff. That takes care of itself on its own. Coach, you're going into a bye week. We'll talk about some of that. But first, let's go into our on-the-court segment with Haley Gillis and Kristen Ryan. Now joined by Kristen Ryan and Haley Gillis. Thank you guys for joining us. Kristen is a junior forward. Haley is a freshman forward. 
So obviously they're a lot taller than I. <laughs> and, and just so that everyone knows, full disclosure, Haley and I, with along with our FUV crew, shared a ride up the St. Louis Gateway Arch, with I, which I didn't actually know was possible to do, go up the Gateway Arch. I didn't either. Yeah. And you were not up on the Gateway Arch? I was. You are, yeah. We yeah. didn't, right? So then they opened up the elevator, and it's these little, like, I don't even know how, how tiny, small, but they're so tiny small. elevators, tiny capsules, not even mm -hmm. elevators. They're round, so the way it does it is, I said, an elevator goes straight up. But th the arch yeah. is an arch, right? So it goes straight up, but since it's a ball, it kind of rotates. Cement, just super small. They put five of us in there. One of them's Haley. Very cramped. <laughs> so <laughs> it was, for me, I saw it open. I was about ready to just wash my hands and say I'm out. Oh, yeah, definitely. It was, so I'm glad, I'm glad I see your faces, too. I know Haley, Haley made me feel a lot better because she got in there and she was, she was looking for help, and I was like, I'm not going to be able to. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm as afraid as you guys are. So, uh, But that was a good experience, yeah, so we was. got to go up the Gateway mm -hmm. Arch. And first time for you guys? Yep, yes, first, time. first time. The windows were a little small up there, but it was still pretty cool to see. Yeah, it was, it was cool. awesome. Yeah. So let's get into some nitty-gritty stuff before we get into a little – I have some fun questions at the end. But first of all, this is a team now with five games to play in the Atlantic 10 – that could not only compete for an A-10 regular season title, could probably compete for an A-10 tournament title in general. Does Do you guys think about that, or is it more just the game ahead? Uh, I think for me it's more the game ahead, and that's how our practices go. We'll prepare for the next game we have going, focus on the little things that we need to, to get the, the win in the next game, and then just worry about the next game the next time. Same thing yeah, for you guys. I, I mean, obviously, a Coach has probably made that – need to be the answer yeah. because when we ask coach it's the same thing it's mm -hmm. it needs to be the next game so obviously a good next game mentality talk to me about that st louis game for a second because you went into double overtime on the road um just first of all from the bench perspective just seeing your team put up that many points first of all yeah and then also just seeing the fight for that long um i thought it was really impressive everyone gave a really good effort uh, it was super fun to watch from the sidelines, and but it was also super nerve-wracking. I was sitting there praying at one point because I just <laughs> really wanted us to get that win. But, you know, they left it all out there on the floor, and we couldn't have been more proud or supportive. And, yeah, what was the reaction post-game to that? Uh, post-game, Coach was proud of us. We went in there not having our full team, but everybody was well-prepared, knew what we had to do, and I feel like everybody gave it the best that they had in them at the time. And now for your roles, obviously a little bit different as the season has gone on and just in general. Um, Chris, and your role has just been, I think, as important as if you were on the court every game playing 40 minutes has been just making sure the team's on it from practice to the bus ride going to the games. Mm -hmm. So how have you seen your role, and do you view it as, in, as important as I do? Um, I don't know if it's as important because I'm not the one in there that's making the shots or in there at the crucial moments with St. Louis, but um, I think that – you're only as good as everyone always says, like you're all the way down the bench, all 12 players have to be all in. So I think it's really important too. But uh, I do give a lot of credit to the girls that get out there and play on the court. And Haley, obviously you've been called on to be a presence in the post because not only has Mary Golding not been in every game, obviously Jamaris has missed two games herself. Mm -hmm. So where have you seen your role progress and would you like it to be a little different, or are you happy with where it is? Uh, I'm happy with my role. I know what I need to do when I'm put in, which is rebounding and looking for getting the ball to the open people so we can get shots off. So I'm pretty content with it. And where do you feel like you still have to go? Where Where is your development at at this point? Uh, right now, I think – I need to improve on my, like, back to the basket post moves. I'm, my shot's there, so just working on that and getting that in. Which is really and now, in general, the team is obviously performing great. Um, two losses in the A-10, only n number three in the Atlantic 10. Where's the confidence standpoint right now from the team in general going into every game? Um, I'd say we're pretty confident, and we trust in our abilities. Mm -hmm. And I think that we know that we have a shot to be in every game, if not take it. Yeah. But uh, like Coach says, you know, you can't get can't get too confident. And uh, there's any any team. The cool thing about the A10 is any day any team can be on and can take it. So mm -hmm. we kind of have to stay level headed. And Haley, obviously you're a freshman. This is your first season, and it's a season that I I don't know that Coach expected they'd be that your team would be in the situation. So mm -hmm. how has the ride this being your first year been? Uh, the ride for me has been pretty good. I feel like 
from coming from my high school I was at, this is like a good position to be in because I'm like used to being like one of the winning teams and doing well, and hopefully we can finish the season out with a win. And then coach uh, continually for this team talks about the team chemistry mm -hmm. being one of the best she's ever coached. So obviously, Kristen, you've you've been here for three seasons. Mm -hmm. Where's the truth to that? Um, I think it's very true. I think this year we're all really close knit group, mm -hmm. all hang out, um, and we all just trust each other. And I think that that's really contributing to our success on the court. Yeah. And then you're a freshman, so you obviously have people above you, and then people that are mm -hmm. you have a young team in general, so you have to get along with the freshmen as it is. So from your yeah. perspective, how is? It? I think all the freshmen we've come together pretty well, and we've molded in pretty nicely with the with the over or the upperclassmen. So it's been fun getting to know everybody and continuing out through the season as a family. So a couple of non-basketball mm -hmm. questions. Um, first, Haley, mm -hmm. I said I was going to do it. Um, <laughs> you have the big tattoo on your mm -hmm. right thigh that you have no problem displaying throughout oh, yeah. the game. First of all, it's on purpose, right? The shorts rolled up it's to make sure you get all the tattoo. Uh, no, it's not I have to. No, 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 purpose. no, no. Don't do that here. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely the reason. Uh, I don't – I feel like it's kind of a trend now for, mm -hmm. like, a bunch of people I've seen play, and they, like, tuck their shorts in. I've done it. It's it's more comfortable, for <laughs> me, I feel like. Okay, so what about the tattoo then? Is there a meeting? Is there a story behind it? Because it's obviously big and just stands out. Uh, yeah, well, this is actually my first tattoo. I got it a, a week or two after I turned 18 with my brother, and he actually has a matching one. And the meaning behind it is, like, Lord Ganesh is the lord of obstacles in the Hindu religion. And, like, each of the little things mean something. So, like, the axe is, like, cutting off old ties and, like, moving forward and being positive pretty much. So I feel like it speaks to who I am as a person. Awesome. And yeah. And just and so to be clear, you don't roll up the no, just to I see the whole thing. Because it's, an, it's an intimidating tattoo, yeah. though, going out there. <laughs> yeah, I don't do it <laughs> for that. <laughs> and then, Kristen, obviously we were talking about it on the bus for a couple weeks during the NFL mm -hmm. playoffs. But the Philadelphia Eagles yeah. winning the Super Bowl, we talked to – uh, Coach Gailey, mm -hmm. what's, your, what's your feeling about oh, it? Oh, I am so hyped. It was the one of the best nights of my life. Uh, let's talk about team chemistry. A lot of the team was <laughs> watching it with me the whole time. And uh, I'm, I had enough Eagles shirt. We gave them all around. So everyone was an Eagles supporter that was in my room. <laughs> I didn't let anyone who wasn't step, in, step foot in my room. But uh, I think it's great that they came out, especially as underdogs. And then obviously um, back home as well was that a was that a family thing? The Eagles yeah. fans. Mm -hmm. My my family, um, my cousins and stuff. They have like season tickets. We've all been diehard fans for as long as I can remember. My dad so happy. He called me as soon as they won. He's like, we finally <laughs> did it. Like this is our year. So I think it was great. Awesome. Well, girls, thank you guys for joining us. And obviously, good luck this week. Davidson coming up on Saturday. Mm -hmm. So good luck. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll be right back with head coach Stephanie Gately as we look ahead to that Davidson game and also this week off. So, coach, this is now a bye week this week and going into the Davidson game. So, Davidson, I'd say a similar opponent on the road as a St. Louis, just being kind of middling. St. Louis a little better has, obviously, Jackie Kemp. You can't really buy that kind of player on every Atlantic 10 team. But that's a game coming after a bye week. Do you? You don't have a choice when the week happens, when the bye week comes. It, is it a good bye week? Are you happy with when it, fell, when it fell? Would you wish it was somewhere else? Or No, this has been great. I mean, in fact, it's funny. I was home, and my husband said, I think you need, like, a light day. So what we did is I asked Chris, our video you know, coordinator, to put together, like, a, a fun highlight tape. And then we had uh, – we had what spike ball, we had cornhole, <laughs> and we had can jam, and so we had some. We did some basketball stuff for about forty-five minutes, and then we had some you know fun games, and and then watched the tape and did a team meal. So I think sometimes you don't necessarily have to go on the court and do anything mm -hmm. rigorous with a lot of contact to kind of just get better. I mean, this week was one to just get you know mentally ready and physically ready. I saw Jamaris Davis almost take out Raylene Kwiatkowski <laughs> celebrating yeah. that Can Jam celebration. That's on Twitter. Follow <laughs> Fordham Rams, Fordham women's basketball. They're, they're, good, they're a good follow. Yeah. Um, how about the players? Is this obviously we talked about in our previous segment, the fatigue for them? How meaningful is it to get this week off? Oh, I think it's huge because we had off yesterday and then we'll have off tomorrow. So and today was really light. And so when you get to this point in the season, you want to go an hour and a half, maybe two hours max. So we'll go against our scout squad on Thursday and Friday. 
and then we'll leave for Davidson, and then we'll come back, and we'll go late on Sunday, you know, because we we it's a different week for us. We, you know, we'll have LaSalle on a Tuesday, so that's a kind of a different week for us. So, um, you know, so at this point, when you're hitting the stretch run, it's about maintenance. It's about maintenance physically and, and, and mentally. So um, that is one thing I've learned through my experience is just making sure that we're sharp and ready to go down the stretch. And we were talking about this off the camera. Five more regular season games before the A-10 tournament. And of those five games, three of them are on the road. Two of them, obviously, against Dayton and Duquesne, the two top teams in the Atlantic 10. I know you're not a coach that likes to look so far ahead beyond the next game, but just looking at that, how 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 is your head, how are your players' heads going into that? Are they looking that far in advance? Are you looking forward to the Dayton game past these, the Duquesne game, or are those just too far too far I mean right now what we discuss is that we have five games left and it's a tough stretch and three are on the road and the first one is Davidson and we lost there last year and they're playing well Mackenzie Latt's averaged 25 and 10 the last four games um she's a handful um they're you know I think they you know I think she's done Gail's done a great job with her team this year they they have an emotional thing with one of their players has leukemia and we're going to be wearing you know the shoelaces to kind of out of respect for her and you know we're trying to support that because I think Atlantic 10 is a family. So um, it will be it will be a very, very difficult game. You know, it's it, you know they gave us everything they had when we played here. And so I don't expect it to be any different down there. And then how much does that St. Louis game carry with you just in terms of that was a road game and it was a game that you gave it all you had and you couldn't get the win late and it took double overtime. Is that still in your head going up again on the road? I mean, I think those games and the George Mason games and any road game is, is proof that, you know, especially with George Mason, there was a great crowd, you know, St. Louis, great crowd. And so I think our kids, being as young as we are, were able to kind of put that in the back of their head and not even – you wouldn't know it, you know, by the way we played. And so I think that's going to help us as we hit the stretch run at this time. And then obviously it's a team that you beat at home earlier on in the season in Davidson – where have, where have they gone? Obviously, we know where you've gone since that game. That was obviously one of the first games that you actually had the target on your back mm -hmm. in the Atlantic 10. So, obviously, there's been a progression from your side since that game. So, where have you seen them go? I mean, they've done a great job. They've gone in. They've beaten some teams on the road. You know, um, they gave – I mean, I was watching their Dayton game. That was – until the last quarter, that was anybody's game. And then Dayton opened it up with a couple threes. Um, they've given everybody a really, really tough game. They had a great out-of-conference schedule, so therefore I think that prepared them for their schedule. They have two very, very good players in Lyon and Mackenzie Latt, so they, you know, they, they like us, have a two-headed monster. Um, I think they play really, really hard, so I, I just feel like, like any game in this conference, you know, it's hard to get wins on the road, and I think it'll be another hotly contested game. And I remember talking about that, the game that we played at home uh, with Davidson, Latt down low, you have Lyon up high. So, obviously, you you like to take one of the weapons out completely. Is it going to be the perimeter, or are you going to nail down the post play? Because that's obviously been the concern the last couple of games. It's a combination of both. I mean, you, you've got to get to a point, and we've been working on both, because I am concerned that, you know, of the dribble penetration that we're giving up. I mean, we, we gave up a lot of points to Rhode Island. I mean, that's uncharacteristic of us, and I just – I mean, we, we didn't really focus on the details. And so, therefore, as a coach, you got to walk away. And if that was game one in conference, I'd be concerned because, it was like, where's the focus? But considering the week we had and considering the stretch of no days off, I, I, you know, had to take it for what it is. And you're playing against a Rhode Island team who's the hunters where a win over us would, you know, make their season. So, you know, I take everything in consideration. And, and now we just got to get back to basics. At this point in the season, Jamaris Davis, you know what you're going to get from her. Mary Golding is going to score double digits likely. Bree Cavanaugh might, is probably going to go 20 points, and Lauren Holden alternates between a slower but more heavy on the assist to she could get 15. She could get to 20 if, she, if she's on on a game. So is this a different offensive powerhouse than you thought you'd have coming into this season? Because obviously you're a defensive-minded coach, and this team has just come up with so much firepower. Well, I mean, we finally, you know, we started to hit a rhythm against George Mason with having the lineup I wanted, and then, boom, we had the issue where we had, the, you know, where G didn't play against St. Louis, so now you got to go back to a different lineup. And it not only affects your lineup, it affects your rotation. So there's so many things to take into consideration. And then, 
Now we go back. I mean, Mary did not play against Davis in the first time. I think she presents matchup problems for mm-hmm. s- for some teams, and I think it, it's more offensive fire. Not only that, but she's also you know one of our best passers and also one of our best rebounders. So that was missing in the last game, and it, and again, it gives you more options because Kendall was suspended for the the game against you know Rhode Island, and she's one of our better shooters. So that didn't give us the luxury of subbing her in. You know, so I mean, now that we've hopefully can contain and maintain this full rotation in the last five games, hopefully it'll, it'll give us some momentum needed as we hit the, the tournament time. Do you worry with a young team about any defensive complacency when they're scoring so much? No, because they fear me more than they fear the opponent. Uh, <laughs> I'd say that in a nice way, but you know, like I, you know, I'm I'm pretty demanding. I'm not a big yeller, but I I will demand, and if I don't like what you're doing, I'm going to certainly let you know. Um, but our kids have been pretty good about responding to that. You know, like our kids realize, like, hey, you know, we're very detailed oriented, and there's a reason why we're successful, and we're successful because we play really good defense. Let's not get away from what got us where we are. Uh, the offense is a bonus, and so we just kind of have to send reminders to them. We saw a similar jump that we're going to see this next week, this past week, when you went from St. Louis to URI at home, St. Louis on the road to URI at home. We're going to see that this week going from Davidson on the on the road to LaSalle back at home. That's a jump in not only the A-10 standings, but also uh, home and away. What what do you th- what goes through your head with that kind of a jump? Is it that kind of different, or is that just going a game at a time? You know, you just have to deal with what you have at hand. I mean, right now, that's a short turnaround for us because we come back and fly back late Saturday night, but that gives us only one and a half days to get ready for LaSalle. So we'll go late Sunday, go late on Sunday, and then – go f- you know go live on Monday and you know LaSalle reminds me a lot of Rhode Island that it's a very talented team you know they have a lot of talent you know they've got you know Amy Griffin who was the leading scorer in the conference last year and they've got some really good other weapons and so for us you know we have our hands full at the stretch run but there's no easy game and if you want to get ready for the tournament you got to be able to get through these games and how much of that game is going to be about learning from URI and trying to put them away early and s- keeping the lead that you had against URI, but keeping it for the full? Uh, for well, that's full. saying you have a lead. You know, sometimes mm-hmm. I think the lead's not the best thing because sometimes I think you just get comfortable and all of a sudden you start, you know, taking bad shots, you know, and taking shots early. And so um, LaSalle can put up numbers. They can, you know, they they have shown the, the ability to put up big numbers. So it's a team that we're really going to have to take some defensive pride in, you know, because they, they pro- they're solid at every position. I mean, they can score at every position. So for us, we got to come in locked and ready to go for 40 minutes, not for what I felt was like 20 against Rhode Island. Well, final five games coming up for the Fordham Rams, so keep it with the Stephanie Gately Show for these last coming weeks. And it's been it's been fun, and we can't wait to keep going as we get into A-10 tournament time. Hold on. Davis on the break all the way. To say the word Pandora. It's a great first name, but she is now gone. Marie Cavanaugh is a name we'll be saying on this year, first season with the Rams. 